So the next speaker is uh, Or Zamir, please. Yes. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks everyone for uh, coming. I am going to present a joint work with Jakob Rolm, Valerie King, and uh, Mikkel Torup, and Uri Zvik. All of them, except of Uri, are actually in the room right now. And yes, that's a, a decent amount of people. And I'm going to talk about random chaos subgraphs. Okay, so just jump in to define what is the thing we're looking at, because actually the problem itself is uh, very simple to state. So we have an undirected graph, a completely arbitrary undirected graph, and we are going to sample a subgraph of it in the following way. So we let it, so we have some parameter k, that could be any fixed integer, and then we let every node of this undirected graph pick uniformly k neighbors. So in this example, this node would uniformly pick two neighbors. If we have a node of a degree which is less than k, then it just picks everything. Okay, so each node picks k neighbors, and now we are looking at the union of all of the edges everyone picked. So basically every node picked k incident edges. Now we look at the union of everything. And as you can see, this, uh, this subgraph that we have sampled has connected components that doesn't have to be exactly the connected components of the entire graph. So some of the edges in the original graph would go inside some connected component of the subgraph, but also some of the edges in the original graph would go between different connected components of the sampled subgraph. And we are going to call these edges that cross between different connected components intercomponent edges. So the problem we are trying to consider is to try bounding the expected number of just these uh, intercomponent edges. So you, so you have an arbitrary undirected graph, you have some integer k, and our question is what is the expected number of intercomponent edges? So in this paper, we proved that for k which is larger than some constant times log n, this number in expectation is at most some constant times n over k. And actually we conjecture that this should be true for a k which is larger than even some constant. And something that is not in the paper, but, uh, but we can show at this point is that actually log log n is enough. And just for a little warm up, I should, uh, I should start by saying why is n over k the right thing? Why this is what we expect to have? So we'd begin with some example showing that you can't expect getting any better than that. So if you just take two clicks of size n over two and connect them with some matching of size n over k, then every edge in this matching would be picked with probability that is roughly k over n. The reason is that it has uh, two endpoints that can pick it and each endpoint would pick it with probability roughly k over n over two. Okay. And as we have n over k edges in the matching and they are all picked independently because different nodes uh, pick each of them, then the probability for missing all of these edges is something that is roughly one minus k over n to the n over k. This thing is a constant, so in expectation we have at least a constant times n over k edges. This means that we cannot expect getting better than that and we think that this is exactly what you should get for every k. Um, so what was previously known about these things? So actually this was fairly studied only when the original graph you sample from is the complete graph. So basically you sample a graph where each node uh, can pick any uh, k other vertices to, to connect to them. And then the connectivity of this thing was studied and so on. This was also studied with uh, some results for graphs with very high degrees. By very high I mean something like at least 10 over 2. Um, but there are no results for general graphs. What was studied as a, as a way to sample subgraphs from general graphs is the following model, which is the very simple model where you just pick every edge with some probability p. So for example, this was uh, studied in the TCS context, con, uh, context by uh, Karger, Klein, and Tarjan as part of the randomized MST algorithm. And they showed that the number of intercomponent edges when you pick every edge independently with probability p is in expectation at most n over p. Um, and if we are using our sampling method to get the same number of edges overall, that means that we are plugging k to be mp over n. This means that we would get uh, 
that we would get MP edges, and if you pick each edge with probability P, you also roughly get MP edges, then the bound we get is N over M times N over P. So for dense graphs, there is a huge factor between them. There is an N factor, and actually we can show that, um, that their, their result is tight. So basically for some graphs, for the same number of uh, edges in the sampled graph, we can get something that is better by a factor of N in terms of intercomponent edges. And the intuitive reason for that is that basically, wh what do you lose from when you sample edges independently? You lose from small cuts. If I have some small cuts, then I am likely to miss them because I would not, uh, not eat any edge on the cut. And small cuts arise sometimes from low degree vertices. And we basically say that if what you care about is the sparsity at the end, then if a vertex is of a very low degree, you can allow yourself to sample more edges touching it. And you would still be left with a, okay, so actually sample the same amount of edges touching it, but it means sampling each edge touching it with a higher probability. Okay, and as an application for this thing, we, we note that this model actually works very well with the context of distributed computing. Why is that? So basically we sample some fixed amount of neighbors for every node, which is something that works well with distributed algorithms. So one problem that we, uh, that we applied to in the paper is the following. This is called connectivity with uh, one-way communication. So basically you have an undirected graph. Each node sees only its neighbors and needs to send some message to a global referee such that from all of the messages the referee got, the referee would be able to tell if the graph is connected or not, or to even con um, construct a spanning forest or something. But there is, a, there is no back communication. You just send one message and that's it. And the question is, how small can the messages be? Um, so there are actually non-trivial things you can do if you have shared or public randomness, if each node can see the same random bits. But without share randomness, the previous best thing that was known was the completely trivial n over two bits, which is roughly just sending everything. And we showed that with private randomness using our uh, sampling lemma, you can get this down to roughly root n. And it actually takes some more algorithmic ideas that I will not get into in this talk because I want to get a little bit into the proof of the sampling lemma. But the, like the general idea we are using is the fact that using our sampling lemma, you can begin by picking k neighbors for every node, then in some sense solve the problem as if your graph has maximum degree k, which should be simpler if k is small, and then you have only n over k edges to fix the whatever you got. So this is the, the very rough idea, and this is also a reason in that we think that this, this type of uh, sampling theorem should be helpful for more distributed uh, problems. Okay, so in the rest of the talk, I'm going to try giving you a very high level proof idea, and this is also simplified. So what we are going to show is that if k is omega of log n, then this k out sampling would leave at most in expectation n over k times log n intercomponent edges. So we had this slogan factor, and actually most of the work in the paper is getting rid of these logarithmic factors, but um, this proof should give you at least some, uh, some idea of uh, how the structure of our proof looks like. Um, okay, so the general structure of our proof is the following. We would grow components gradually. By that I mean that instead of sampling at the same time k neighbors out of each node, we would sample them one by one in two ways. The first way is that we are going to sample different nodes at different points in the analysis, but also we are not going to sample all k neighbors at the same time. But we will sample some neighbor and then some more neighbors, and in the end we would show that we didn't sample more than k. Um, and the way we are choosing what to sample is that we are basically maintaining, uh, maintaining some connected components. At the beginning, the connected components in the subgraph are simply each node by itself because we still didn't sample anything. And each time we are taking the smallest connected component in terms of number of edges and try to sample more edges touching this connected component. So in the empty graph, for example, we would pick any node because any node is a, uh, is a connected component of size one at this point, 
and then we would sample some neighbors going out of it. For example, one neighbor going out of it. And now we have one component of size two and all of the others are of size one, so we would pick another one and sample something out of it and so on and so on and we get larger components. Um, at this point, for example, these two nodes are a component, we would sample something out of them and so on. And we are going to continue until everything gets connected but sometimes if we didn't manage to connect some component to anything else, we are going to remove all the edges touching this component. We are going to remove all the edges crossing the cut defined by the component. And these edges that we are removing from the graph are edges that we consider as if they all could be intercomponent edges. So we are going to show that we are going to manage to connect the entire graph while we remove some, some small number, this small number in the paper is n over k, and here it would be n over k times log n edges. Um, yes, and everything else gets connected, basically. Okay, so here is an example. If I'm trying to sample this uh, out of this component of size two and I don't manage to, then I would just remove all of the edges touching this component. Um, and one other thing that is happening here is that we are actually uh, going to, to sample edges touching uh, each component with uh, some probability repeatedly and we show that the sum of this probability sums up to something that is at most k over uh, the degree of the vertex. And this means that we don't actually sample k neighbors out of each node, we sample in expectation k neighbors out of each node but this actually doesn't matter that much as long as k is larger than log n. This begins to matter a lot when k is smaller than log n, but when k is larger than log n, then sampling in expectation some number of edges is roughly the same up to constants as sampling exactly the number of edges. Uh, in the talk, I'm not going to get to the fine details of why that is the same. Um, okay, so now, now we are going to distinguish between two different types of components. So the first type of components, which we call i-degree components, are components in which we have some, uh, some vertex for which the degree is at least twice the size of the component. So if I have some component of size s that contains a vertex of degree at least 2s, I would call this uh, component an i-degree component. And in this case, the way I would try to connect this component to something else is by simply picking a random neighbor out of this vertex. Um, the reason I, it's, it makes sense to do that is because I have probability at least, uh, at least half to get connected to something else when I do that. It has twice the amount of uh, neighbors as the size of the component, then half of its neighbors are outside of the component. So I'm likely to get connected to something. And I'm just going to do it uh, again and again and again until I manage to connect it to anything. So in expectation, this would take uh, twice, basically. I would need two, uh, two tries in order to connect it to something. And every time I did manage to connect, uh, to connect a component to something, the size of the component doubles because I only uh, tried to connect the smallest component to other things. Then basically I would have at most log n iterations uh, in which I would try to double the, uh, the, double the, 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 to double the i degree component and in each of them in expectation I would need two tries. So in expectation, the total number of, uh, of neighbors I'm sampling uh, out of a vertex when it is in a high degree component is uh, at most some constant times log n. And as, as, uh, as the degree is at least log n, we don't mind paying for extra log n neighbors and actually we can get this also with high probability or high enough probability if we increase this constant. So we can get high probability such that for every node you wouldn't sample more than let's say 10 log n neighbors in this, uh, in this type of uh, iterations. And then the other case are components where all of the degrees are at most the size of the component or twice the size of the component. And in this case what we are going to do is to take each edge leaving the component, each edge that is crossing the cut defined by the component and to sample it with probability k over s, where k is this uh, number of neighbors I want to get for every node, and s is the size of the component. And the reason, the reason we are not sampling too much 
is that a vertex starts samples, starts sampling in these slow degree components only when the size of the component is at least roughly its, uh, its degree. That means that in the first time, I would sample with probability that this is roughly k over d or 2k over d. And then every time I, I need to do it again, the component uh, doubles because every time I manage to connect the component to something, it doubles. And that means that in the next iteration, I would need half of that and then half of that and so on. So the total number of probability with which I would sample edges touching some node in this type of iterations would be some constant times k over d. Uh, and in here I assumed that I'm not going to do the same thing without doubling uh, for a few times. So what we do if this thing fails, if sampling each edge with probability s, uh, s, uh, k over s didn't uh, succeed, then we just cut all of the edges, we remove all of the edges touching the component. So for low degree components, we try this thing only once. Okay. Uh, and now, now we need to show that the expected number of edges we removed is small enough. So how do we show that? So denote, for example, by x times s over k the number of edges crossing this cut defined by the component, then this is the expected number of removed edges. What is that? Then the probability we eat every edge is, uh, in this cut is k over s, and the number of edges in the cut is x times s over k, so this is the probability that we didn't manage to connect the components to anything. And if we didn't manage to connect it to anything, then we are going to, to throw away all the edges crossing the cut. And the number of edges crossing the cut is x time s over k. Yeah, and this thing is roughly x time s over k time e to the minus x, because that thing was roughly e to the minus x. And x time e to the minus x is bounded by a constant. So basically up to constants, the expected number of removed edges is s over k. And if we removed something, then we can kind of average the, the number of edges we removed over the vertices in this uh, component. And we had s uh, vertices in this component we removed. So on average, each one of them needs to pay one over k. That means that, uh, that the total number of, uh, if, I, if I can, average some cost to each node, and at the end, the number of removed edges would be the number of nodes, which is n times this thing. But we do need to notice that every node could have participated in log n such steps. It had log n opportunities to miss the cut, because every time we didn't miss the cut, the component doubled, and then we tried this thing maybe again. So actually, the cost per node is log n over k because the cost in each round is roughly one over k, and it had log n rounds. So this average cost per node is roughly log n over k, which means that we are going to remove in expectation a total of n over k log n edges. Okay, so this is a very, very rough uh, sketch of the proof. Some subtle point that I didn't mention so far is the fact that we use the degrees of the, yeah. We use the degrees of the nodes when we sample the things. Where we wanted to say that we don't sample more than k over the degree, so the degrees mattered. But when we remove edges, when we cut this, uh, these edges going out of component, then we change the degrees. So this, this can cause some problems, and we solve that by, uh, by doing the following thing. If most of the edges going out of a node, if at least three uh, fifth of the edges going outside of a node were cut, we just cut everything else. And we show that this doesn't remove uh, more than a constant factor more of edges, and then the degrees are roughly the same as they were in the beginning, so this is not a problem. And the main challenge we solve in the paper is getting rid of the extra log n factor. So we don't want to pay this uh, one over k price every round, we want to pay this one over k price only once in total, so this is most of the technical work in the paper, but the framework of the proof is similar. We still do this type of rounds, we just uh, analyze them in a more clever way. Uh, and I think that the main challenge that, that this leaves is, is basically getting for a k that is less than a, so at this point it's not log n, at this point we can get log log n, so the question is, can you get all the way down to a constant? Or, something like that. Another thing that is open and interest and very interesting, and maybe this is a, a very good place to raise it up, is 
that this thing we think at least should have more applications. We are not aware of many more applications, so maybe this is a good, a good forum for like, a, I don't know, sharing this result with people in order for them to, to try think uh, about more applications for that. And that is all I was planning on saying about it. So, questions are over there? What did you say? Multigraph. Um, so, we didn't consider multigraphs in our paper. You should notice that in some sense the, I mean, the graph we are getting after contracting all of these connected components is a multigraph. We do consider like edges going between the same two components, but we didn't consider the case where the original graph is a multigraph. Question over there. Yes. So uh, actually, we can show some type of concentration even without extra log n factors, and and just uh, a note in general: if you don't care about logarithmic factors, then there are even much simpler proofs losing uh, a few log factors. Um, yeah, actually we can at this point maybe even show stronger stuff about like the sparsity of the cuts you get and so on. Yeah. A question from one of the others. <laughs> We are improving online, I mean, the, the, the results. Someone wants to improve the log log n to a little bit below. <laughs> okay, other questions? Okay, so thanks again. Thank you.